Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we're going to be talking about Disney Plus Day, the Andor series, the Acolyte and more. So without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. We begin with a few important updates for the big day next Thursday, Disney Plus Day. The Disney and related social media accounts have begun promoting it and even though they promise big Star Wars announcements, Star Wars is nowhere to be represented in the official teaser poster. While it's expected that D23 Expo which takes place the following day through to the 11th is going to hold bigger things for Star Wars, once again as fans, we have to prepare ourselves for very little on Thursday. Now there is a room I've seen make its way online that Tales of the Jedi could be the big release on the day. Now that would be absolutely fantastic, a great surprise and an amazing way to have some animated Star Wars before and or, given the uncertainty of the Bad Batch situation. But let's not count on it, but the absence of Star Wars on the posters is yet another sign that just like last year, we shouldn't expect too much. I think it's a shame generally speaking that Marvel and other IPs are so focused on compared to Star Wars. And on top of this, we have some rather unfortunate news for the Bad Batch. After some back and forth on Disney's end regarding the release date being delayed and then seemingly undelayed, we seem to have an official response. Yesterday, the official Disney schedules for September started making the rounds on Twitter, and it seems as though on the Disney Plus calendar, the Bad Batch is not listed anywhere in September. I'm still keeping my fingers crossed for a surprise drop on the 28th, but it's not looking too good at this point. At this stage, I'm just hoping it still releases this year, maybe in a month's time in October, or beyond that in November or December. We all miss our favourite Clone Force 99. And before we move on, finally on the Disney Plus side of things, the Wall Street Journal have come out with an exclusive report stating that Disney Plus are looking to offer subscribe-only Star Wars toys as an incentive to fans. Let's see what they said. Star Wars has arguably been the heart and soul of Disney Plus since the platform launched in November of 2019, the Mandalorian being the biggest player. The first episode was available to subscribers on day one, bringing in millions of viewers as Mando met who was then referred to as Baby Yoda. And three years later, Grogu and Din are still the two biggest characters on the platform, with the show being the biggest smash hit. And after the Book of Boba Fett, we have to wait till February 2023 for the next installment of the Mandoverse in The Mandalorian Season 3. And our new report reveals that merchandise could be a heavy player related to The Mandalorian going forward. The Wall Street Journal has reported that Disney plans to introduce a membership program for Disney Plus subscribers. Though in its early stages of development and planning, word is that the program will offer exclusive perks and merchandise opportunities for consumers. Among the kinds of merchandise to be offered are t-shirts, themed accessories, and kids' costumes that tie into the platform's shows, notably The Mandalorian. Disney Plus plans to introduce a QR code system that's going to send subscribers to the Shop Disney website, where special access to products is going to be available. And for Star Wars and Mandalorian fans in particular, the Wall Street Journal say that the Darksaber is going to be a specific toy exclusive to members. In their own words they say, one example that executives have discussed as a possible merchandise tie-in is offering an exclusive toy version of the Darksaber and this will only be for sale to Disney Plus subscribers. They say the ultimate goal driving the initiative is data collection and more subscribers. Disney is looking to further understand consumer trends and behaviours and also what Star Wars fans want. And you might say this is quite ironic given how late in the day it is for Disney Star Wars to be listening to its customers. The Wall Street Journal say that the Darksaber is just going to scratch the surface of what's going to be available for purchase. While it wasn't specified, the best bet is that the version of the Darksaber is the legacy lightsaber at Disney Parks. The outlet also claims that lightsabers are undoubtedly going to be the biggest draw for Star Wars fans looking to join. And with so many upcoming Star Wars shows, they might have great success with this. They finish by saying that Ezra's lightsaber could be the incentive when Ahsoka drops next year. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, do you think this initiative is a good idea? So before we talk about Cassian guys, let's move on to the Acolyte, because sets have been spotted at Shinfield Studios here in England. This comes courtesy of Bespin Bulletin and they say the following, We've known for quite some time that Star Wars the Acolyte would be filming this October in the UK, with filming expected to run until May. Just a couple of months ago it was revealed that production will take place at the newly constructed Shinfield Studios in Berkshire, and now the new sets have been photographed, being constructed constructed at the location backing up that previous report. The Acolyte will use a combination of physical sets on location and the volume, and it's worth noting that both the Acolyte and Andor Season 2 are filming in the UK this fall. 
Last week, Bespin Bulletin were alerted by several people that there was movement at Shinfield Studios, with sets being constructed in a nearby field, and it was photographed in Berkshire Live, which is where these photos come from. At the moment, Shinfield Studios houses four stages, but they're looking to expand that to 18 in the next couple of years. Really exciting stuff, guys. The Acolyte sounds like it's going to be awesome. And so finally, my dear Meglorians, it's time to talk about Diego Luna and Andor, because the actor claims the show's going to challenge what we think we know about Rogue One. Diego Luna is well aware that you know how Cassian's story ends, but he's certain that Andor, Disney Plus's upcoming Star Wars series, is going to change the way you look at the character in 2016's Rogue One A Star Wars story. According to Luna, the younger Cassian's journey in this show is going to recontextualize the future Rebel's role in Rogue One. He says, quote, in fact, we're going to challenge every idea you have, or every answer answer you came up with, why or how things happened, and why this character did what he did. Everyone who watched Rogue One thinks they have the answer, so we're going to challenge that, and we're going to come to you and say no, listen, things were not the way you imagined, they were this way. This had to happen for someone to become the person you know. Series creator Tony Gilroy, who co-wrote Rogue One, has already mapped out Andor Season 2, and from the sounds of things from his comments, it sounds like he's way more excited for the second season than the first one. And even Diego Luna is excited about the format. He says, I think it's perfect, it's lovely, it's almost like four different movies via four three-episode blocks. There's also space in between each block where time passes, so we're allowed to evolve and transform. Diego Luna was then asked if it felt strange that he had to let his character go years earlier, how he handled the death in Rogue One. Luna says, probably, I let the guy go, I mourned, I even had ceremonies to talk about him, and then there I was, being Cassian again, but I was also coming out of the worst time of confinement during the pandemic. So it wasn't just the weirdness of going back to play a guy whose death I already played, but it was also because I was coming out of many months of being the most stationary I've been since I was a baby. Baby, I couldn't move in the crib, so social interaction was gone in our lives and suddenly I was going back to a set. So it took time, but it was fascinating at the same time because I was relearning a language and relearning how to communicate. It was very interesting and very unique, like no other job, and being far away from my house during such a difficult moment was very intense in many ways. And finally, one thing that stands out in this interview is Diego Luna was asked about Tony Gilroy's approach and what he thinks about Tony's comments of not being a lifelong Star Wars fan. Diego says it gave Tony freedom in a very rigorous way. He says, it's very interesting to have a voice like his in this story. You never approach a story in this way where you know what the end is. And the creative team doesn't have to deliver an ending that you're not expecting. We don't have to think about that. So in many ways, the freedom opened up a lot of possibilities and a lot of room to create something very new. This whole notion of challenging every idea we have as fans. Now, in principle, that could go very well or very poorly. But in the case of Tony Gilroy, from everything we've seen and heard from the show, it sounds like it's going to go very well. I'm super excited guys, just over two weeks to go. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below guys of everything we spoke about in today's video. If you enjoyed it, as always, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. May the force be with you always. I'm Star Wars Meg, have a good one.